Now, from Wish TV, this is The Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Coming up tonight, sectional titles are claimed as the boys' basketball tournament rolls on. In the coach's corner, meet the man who just led Carmel Swimming to another pair of state championships. Plus, our athlete of the week is a key reason Noblesville is a sectional champion. When it came down to it, I mean, I had to keep us in it. I had to keep us focused. We're throwing down in all new Zone Extra right now. Good evening and welcome into the Zone Extra. I'm Andrew Chernoff. What a great week of high school sports action with boys basketball sectionals in the books and regionals on deck this weekend. In the coach's corner, once again, his Greyhounds are state champions. Carmel swimming coach Chris Plum is here in studio for a conversation. Plus, our athlete of the week just helped lead Noblesville to its first boys basketball sectional title in 13 years. Meet Miller senior Luke Almodovar, and we go on campus to catch up with former Indiana All-Star and Lawrence North standout Tony Perkins during his junior season with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now, let's take a look at this week in high school sports. It was a showdown between Nick Rivals for the sectional 11 title as number one Ben Davis takes on Pike. Second quarter, Pike thinking upset. The kick out to Devin Woods from downtown is good. And the Red Devils lead by eight. The Giants rally back later in the quarter. Mark Zachary drives inside, and how about that acrobatic finish? It's good for two. Ben Davis ties the game at 24. Time winding down in the quarter, Sean Arnold scraps for the loose ball, turns it into two. Ben Davis back in the lead. They go on to win it 80-59. Meanwhile, in sectional 10, Cathedral taking on Crispus Attics in a rematch of the city championship. First quarter, Cathedral on a roll. Xavier Booker drains the three to put the Irish up double digits. Irish begin to pull away in the third quarter. Zach Meeks, how about that dunk? Cathedral leads by 18. Later in the quarter, Jerron Tibbs for three. He goes over 1,000 points for his career in this game. Then late in the fourth, Cathedral on the fast break, and Derek Kennedy gets the crafty layup. Irish win by 43. The defending state champs are moving on to the sectional 12 championship. It's Plainfield hosting number eight Brownsburg. Early on in this one, dogs looking good. Drew Thompson with the steal, finds Elhaj Diallo who lays it in. Brownsburg up nine to two, and Plainfield needs a timeout. Just before the half, check out the ball movement right here from the dogs. J.D. Lynch, hey, I'm open, I'm open. They give it to him, he takes advantage, buries the three, the lead is 14 at the break. Fourth quarter, Brownsburg rolling. Lynch, the lob to Cannon, catchings. Purdue fans will like that. The future Boiler throws it down with one hand. Dogs win their first sectional title since 2020. 64-48 is the final. So Saturday is regional day across the state, and what a pair of Class 4A games featuring ranked teams on the docket at the historic Southport Fieldhouse. First up, number 10, New Palestine, takes on eighth-ranked Brownsburg. That game tips off at one. Then at four, sixth ranked and defending state champion Cathedral faces off against number one and unbeaten Ben Davis. The Giants win the head to head matchup by 12 in the regular season. But last year in the regional, it was the Irish who prevailed. Meanwhile, in sectional eight, Noblesville taking on Zionsville. Just before the half, Cooper Bean dribbles it out, drains the three. It's 34-16 Noblesville at halftime. The Eagles not giving up though in the second half. Logan Imes hits the long two right here. This starts the comeback. Fourth quarter, Eagles down seven. Imes again gets it, he's wide open. Count it, he scored 18 points in the fourth, 24 total for Imes, Zinesville within four. Fourth quarter, Hunter Walston out in the corner, knocks down the three, Noblesville wins the sectional title for the first time since 2010. 58-50 the final. More on this game coming up in our Athlete of the Week feature. And at Center Grove, it was the Trojans taking on Bloomington North. Third quarter, Center Grove ahead by three. Tay Spears fires it up from deep and connects. Ties the game at 23. A few minutes later, Center Grove's Joey Schmitz drains the shot from the top of the key. Trojans up two. Fourth quarter. 
J.Q. Roberts. Shows off his range. The three gives Bloomington North the lead. They win it 43-41 and will face Columbus North on Saturday. Meanwhile, in gymnastics, the state tournament continued last weekend with the regional round. On Friday night, Franklin Central hosted one of the three regionals in the state. And congrats to Bloomington North as the Cougars win the team title, finishing ahead of Columbus North and New Pal. All three of those teams will advance to the state finals this weekend. Among the individual gymnasts advancing the state are Martinsville's Lily Boyd in the all around and Gabby Grubb in the vault. Here's a look at the details for the gymnastics state finals. Action takes place on Saturday with competition beginning at 1130 AM on the campus of Ball State University inside Worthen Arena. Good luck to all the gymnasts competing this weekend. And as we start to transition to the spring sports calendar for the first time, the boys volleyball season is set to begin this week as an IHSAA emerging sport. Now last season for the second time in program history, Ron Colley won the state championship. The top ranked Royals defeated number two Hamilton Southeastern in three sets in the title match to complete an outstanding season in which they were also nationally ranked. The Royals have high expectations again this season and return seven members of last year's varsity squad. Time for a break, but we have much more ahead on the Zone Extra. Up next, it's the Coach's Corner. He's the legendary coach of the Carmel High School swim program. Hounds coach Chris Plum is here in studio with us. And still ahead, he's the leading scorer on a sectional champion basketball team. We'll introduce you to our Athlete of the Week from Noblesville. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. The Coach's Corner, presented by Bailey and Wood Mortgage Lender. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Time now for the Coach's Corner, and he is the winningest coach in IHSAA swimming and diving history. And last month, his girls and boys team both won state titles once again. Welcome to the Zone Extra, Carmel Swimming Head Coach Chris Plum. Chris, thanks for being here. Yeah, happy to be here and talk a little bit about Carmel Swimming. Absolutely. Let's start with the boys because that was the most recent state title yeah. because they, of course, had their state championship after the girls. Nine straight. Every year teams are different. What did you like about this group this past year? Well, you know, I really loved our senior leadership. Um, the guys that we had up top were dynamic and, you know, we had a national record broken um, in the prelim, so that just really set the tone for one of our seniors, uh, Mr. Shackle. I want to talk about Mr. Shackle yeah. in a little bit. First, let's talk about the girls. 37 in a row. Yeah. When you say that, it's absurd every single year. How do you manage to keep these girls swimmers, I guess, motivated knowing how much success they've had over the course of this program's history? Yeah, I mean, I get that question a lot. and I just tell people, like, the people in the pool, they, the most they want is three. So they're hungry to four, and they certainly don't want to let anybody down. And the culture has been built where they know what to do, and then it's their job to go execute at the meet. It, it's one of those things, you're, you're watching this, it seems like these teams get better and better. Oh, yeah. I mean, the records and the times, I mean, they just keep getting faster and faster. And they just they see the records up there, and they, they say, I want to get that. I want to get that time. And um, fortunately, we have the staff and athletes that can do that. I want to take a look at the numbers within this program. There are 38 st total state championships for the girls, 23 for the boys. I mean, it's absurd. How much does that make an impact on future swimmers in the program when they see all the trophies, all those stats? Well, here's what I say, you know, they, they, every day they come in, they have words on one side of the pool and then the other are the state championships trophy. So, you know, you're looking at this is what, on one side of the pool, the words inspire me and then the trophies say, hey, look, it can be done. And at the meet, it's great because we have all our younger athletes up in the stands cheering and watching what can happen to them later down the road. And it's got to be cool just even from a mentorship standpoint with some of these swimmers as they look towards the younger, younger crew. Yeah, I mean, there's a great relationship. I mean, uh, we have people signing caps and, and autographs sometimes at practice, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cool to see. I want to talk about the shackles now. Yeah. You have senior Aaron Shackle, sophomore Alex Shackle, so many state championships between the two of them this year. What was it like coaching them this year? 
I mean, honestly, it was wonderful. They work so hard. They're an inspiration. They're wonderful to coach. They're always seeking feedback. But, you know, Andrew and, well, Andrew's the twin, and then we have Alex and Aaron, and great young people. Aaron is a chill dude, comes in kind of slowly, but he works hard. Alex is just a spitfire. So they're a contrast, but they're just great to coach. You know, one of them, I believe it was Aaron Shackle. He spent time with one of your former Greyhound swimmers and Olympian, Drew Kibler. I, yeah. I think that they sort of worked with each other throughout yeah. this whole year. When you see a former swimmer taking on sort of a mentorship role of some of these current guys, what goes through your mind? It warms my heart, to be honest. You know, like that carry on is what we're all about. We want, we want to create this legacy. We want the relationship and knowledge passed from one athlete down to the next. And that, and Drew has that unique knowledge. He's been to the Olympics. He knows what it's like. And so Aaron's just a sponge listening. And so when you have that, now it's Aaron's job to pass that down. And, and we want to keep that going. You've been at Carmel how many years now? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. I've been a head coach for 16 years. 16 years. How have you grown over the course of your career at Carmel as a coach? That's a great question. I, I think I've just learned to value relationships and culture more and more, and that's what it's about. And um, the ability not to be panicked or when things don't go your way, you just you kind of take things in stride. and. Um, you know, it, but it is like every day is different, so that's the great part of being a coach. You take that leap into the pool every time you win a state championship. How much do the swimmers on this team embrace watching you guys take part in that? And what's that feeling like when you do that? <laughs> well, it never gets old. Uh, I really love jumping into the pool with the team. It's it kind of that uniting moment. The kids love it. And I love going in with the administration, too. You know, seeing our principal and superintendent and our athletic director all there jumping in, it, it is a, it's a great experience and I love doing it and I'll keep wanting to do it every year. It, that's got to be one of the highlights for the guys and the, and the girls on the team every single year. Yeah, they're like, I hope you guys can swim still. Absolutely. And you're proving that they can and <laughs> yeah. they can for sure. Right. Chris Plum, appreciate the time. Yeah. Congratulations again on the year after year success. Yeah, thanks for having me. Still ahead on the Zone Extra, it's our Athlete of the Week. His strong play last weekend helped Noblesville to its first boys' hoop sectional title in over a decade. Up next, meet senior Luke Almodovar. And we go on campus with current Iowa junior and former Lawrence North basketball star, Tony Perkins. This is the Zone Extra, presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. As you saw earlier in the show, for the first time since 2010, Noblesville won a boys basketball sectional championship. One of the key reasons for that title was senior Luke Almodovar. Now, Friday night in the sectional semifinal, Almodovar led the Millers with 19 points in a win over Westfield. Then in Saturday's sectional championship against Zinesville, he scored 17 of his team high 23 points in the first half as the Millers picked up a 58 50 victory at over 17 points per game. Almodovar is Noblesville's leading scorer, and he told us last weekend was certainly special for him and his teammates. When it came down to it, I mean, I had to keep us in it. I had to keep us focused. Uh, I didn't get the ball very much in the second half. That's just how the game went. So I had to uh, we had to stay calm and stay focused. It really gives us a great luxury knowing that we got a guy that can go get points the way he's been able to this year. He shot an unbelievable percentage from three point uh, for the season. Um, you know, he had a great weekend. In the first half uh, Saturday night, he was really, really good. It was the best feeling I could have ever felt. I mean, uh, working so hard these past four years at this program, it means everything to me to uh, at my senior year to finally uh, get the win in sectionals and uh, it, I just couldn't describe the feeling on the court. It was very special for me and my teammates. I think he, he's taken a little bit more of a leadership role, responsibility. You know, uh, I think all the kids and especially Luke and Cooper have really done a good job. I've grown into a leader and uh, I never thought I'd be that, that kind of guy to be the, the leader on the team. But um, I've grown a lot as a leader this year. He's having a great season. Time for a break, but still more to come on the Zone Extra, including our play of the week. Plus, it's the latest installment of Ask the Commissioner with Paul Nydig of the IHSAA. This is the Zone Extra, 
Presented by Franciscan Health Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Zone Extra. Now it's time to go on campus where we catch up with a former Central Indiana High School athlete as they compete at the collegiate level. This week we head to the University of Iowa. Hawkeyes junior guard Tony Perkins is averaging over 12 points, four rebounds, and nearly three assists per game this year. Last week, the former Lawrence North standout and Indiana High School All-Star delivered an outstanding performance at Assembly Hall, notching a double-double with 23 points and 10 rebounds to help lead Iowa to an upset win over the Hoosiers. Perkins attributes much of his success to the head coaches he's had the last several years. Fran McCaffrey in college at Iowa and the legendary Jack Kiefer while at Lawrence North. Good, of course, you know, um, Jack Kiefer, Indiana great high school coach. Um, he's still in my ear to this day. Um, after every game, he usually called me, texts me. Um, so that's good, um, helps me, motivates me as well. Um, and then Coach McCaffrey, uh, he stays on us every day. Um, he makes people want to stay on me to get better every day, work on my game, um, even when I'm tired. He get, get, get in the gym, TP, you know, he always pushes me. So having both of them in my corner, having them both want me to be great is real, feel real good for me. Jack Kiefer was, of course, at that game watching Tony Perkins against IU. Now it's time for the Ask the Commissioner. Each week we take one of your questions to IHSA Commissioner Paul Nydig and bring you his answer. Here is this week's question. How excited are you to see the first season of boys volleyball as an IHSAA emerging sport? Well, I think anytime we offer a new sport, we, we offer opportunity. And while boys volleyball has been around in some schools for a while, we hope that by us uh, supporting uh, boys volleyball now in the state of Indiana and, and bringing underneath partially the, the, the umbrella of the IHSA, that we're really going to be able to help promote boys volleyball across the state. And, and our goal is to grow the numbers. So in a couple of short years, we're able to offer a full state tournament. Uh, for the boys, and I think that's uh, that's the goal for everybody. And we've seen uh, are anticipating good numbers, and we know of several programs that have picked up volleyball since the announcement of the emerging sport of volleyball. Uh, and so we expect uh, quick, rapid growth in a state tournament in a few short years. Know those volleyball programs are excited. Thanks again to the commissioner for joining us. Here's how you can submit questions. Send us a tweet using the hashtag the Zone Extra and Ask the Commish, and your question could be used on a future show. Now it's time to take a look at our play of the week. Each week we feature one of the top plays from the world of high school sports in central Indiana. Plus, we want you to get involved. We'll tell you how your video can be featured on a future show. But first, here is this week's top play. Kokomo taking on Harrison. Kokomo up three with two seconds to go. Cal Gick, though. You've got to be kidding. From beyond half court, it's good. That ties the game and sends it to overtime. However, Harrison would end up falling by five. Take a look again at this incredible shot. Wow, the reaction from the crowd is priceless. Now, our crew see a lot of great action, but we want to see your best plays every week as well. Your video could be featured on a future edition of The Zone Extra as our play of the week. Here's what to do. Tweet us the video of a great play from a high school sporting event using the hashtag the zone extra and tune in on Thursday night to see if your submission becomes our play of the week. And my Indie TV 23 is your local home for high school sports coming up on Saturday. Not one, not two, but three different regional championship games. It starts at 1 p.m. with Brownsburg taking on New Pal from Southport. Then at 4 p.m., defending state champion Cathedral squares off against number one Ben Davis as the Giants continue their quest for an unbeaten season. And at 7 p.m., it's Kokomo facing off against Fort Wayne Northside. You can watch all the action live on my Indy TV 23. It's going to be a fun Saturday for sure. That's going to do it for the Zone Extra. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in again next Thursday night for a brand new episode. For even more Central Indiana High School sports, you can always log on to wishtv.com. Have a great night. We'll see you back here next Thursday night.